Hi, my name is Colin. I'm an Applications Manager at KEB America. And this video series, we're going to go through setting up EtherCAT communication with KEB slave devices. We're going to overview how to set up and configure Ethernet over EtherCAT on a Beckhoff PLC so that we can program and configure the drive parameters through a connection from your PC to the Beckhoff PLC. Let's get started. First, make sure you have all of your devices powered. Make sure you have TwinCAT and CombiVis installed on your PC. You should also have a Beckhoff PLC and KEB drive such as an S6 or F6 as well as any cables you need to connect to the PLC and the drive. So let's get started by starting CombiVis. We're going to use CombiVis to create the ESI file that we are going to import into TwinCAT so that the EtherCAT master recognizes the KEB VFD. After CombiVis opens, uh, we have the start page. If you have a USB to serial adapter that you can connect to the drive, uh, you can scan for KEB devices uh, to connect to the drive. And from there, you can create the ESI file. Um, however, if you do not have a USB to serial adapter, you can create the ESI file offline. To do that, uh, select Connect to KEB device. Under Add Device, select Offline. Select the device type. And lastly, select the firmware version. After you select the firmware version, select Add Device. Once you added the device to the project, make sure the Wizards tab is selected and navigate to the Field Bus tab. From the Field Bus tab, uh, you can view that EtherCAT is selected. KB Drives also support several other Field Buses. To map the process data, you can see there's a list of available parameters on the right-hand side of the window. I'm going to select uh, from the stored mappings, uh, the standard process data mappings. After selecting that, it will automatically load uh, the variables in the PDO slots. From here, we can create the ESI file by selecting the EtherCAT box and selecting Export Device Description. Step one is to select the kind of file to export. Select Export as Complete EtherCAT Device XML. Step two, we can choose the export settings. I'm going to leave them as default. However, you can add a specific device name. You can also select multiple startup checks as well. Once you're finished uh, configuring the export settings, select Save as XML file. And you can actually save this uh, directly to the TwinCAT folder. So select the drive that your TwinCAT is installed to. Go to the Config folder and I.O. folder. And lastly, into the EtherCAT folder. And you can see the call out below with the expected directory in your PC. After selecting the directory, uh, select Save. After saving, we can now create a new project in TwinCat. After creating the project, we're first going to add the EtherCAT master uh, to your device tree on the left side of your project. Under I.O. and Devices, right-click and select Add New Item. Um, under the type EtherCAT, select EtherCAT Master. I'll select CX only because that's a PLC I'm using. After adding the EtherCAT master, let's define a network adapter that's going to be used as the EtherCAT master. 
To do that, double click on the EtherCAT object in the device tree, navigate to the adapter tab, and select search. Before you do this, make sure that your PC is properly connected to the PLC that you're using. To do this, you'll need to define a route to the PLC. This will not be covered in this video. Select the search box and you can see the interfaces found that are available to be used as the EtherCAT master. I'm going to use the X001 port on my PLC. Select OK. After selecting the correct adapter, let's add in the KB drive to the EtherCAT master. Right click and select add new item and navigate to the KB automation KG section and insert the KB drive. After inserting the KB drive, um, there's an option to append the linked access. Uh, I will not do that. Uh, however, if this is required for your application, uh, feel free to do so. After adding the KB drive, I'm going to configure a few settings to enable uh, Ethernet over EtherCAT. First, you're going to go to the EtherCAT master. Select the EtherCAT tab and advanced settings. Select EOE support and select enable under virtual ethernet switch. Connect to TCP IP stack under Windows network. And lastly, select IP enable router under Windows IP routing. The next step is to configure the EOE settings on the drive. Double click on the drive in the device tree. Select the EtherCAT tab and advanced settings. Select mailbox. In the mailbox polling section, select cyclic and define a cycle time. The cycle time will be how often the EtherCAT master polls uh, the KB drive for data. After defining the cycle time, expand the mailbox options and select EOE. First make sure that the virtual ethernet port box is checked, then select the IP port and define an IP address that will be written to the KB drive. Once you're done setting the IP address, select OK. After setting the EOE configuration settings, before we download the project, I'm going to link a few variables to the process data of the drive. After creating my global variable list, I'm going to rebuild the solution. After compiling the solution, double click on the KB drive again, and under the linked to column in the EtherCAT tab, link the process data. After linking variables to the process data, let's go ahead and activate the configuration. After activating the configuration, Log into the PLC and run the project. As you can see, the process data is updating and 
the state of EtherCAT is operational. And the last step before we connect to the drive in CombiVis is we're going to add a route on the PC to transfer the packets of data from the S6 to your PC. To do that, open the command prompt on your PC in admin mode. Once a command prompt is opened, type in route add and first add the IP address of the KB drive. Next, add the IP address of the adapter on the PLC that your PC is connected to. And select enter. After pressing enter, you should see the prompt OK. After that, confirm that you can reach the S6 drive, enter ping, and the IP address of the S6. Okay, looks like we are connected. And the last step of this video is to connect to the drive in CombiVis. We're going to reopen CombiVis. I previously added an offline S6 device. I can now go back to that offline device and edit the communication settings to bring it online. Select the communication settings tab and select edit communication settings. After opening that, select the UDP slash IP section. Enter the IP address of the S6. And after entering the IP address of the S6, you should see the drive automatically populate under the Found Devices box and select Use This Device. After selecting Use This Device, you'll see on the left-hand side of the project uh, the device name with a green connection symbol next to it. At this point, we can program the drive and the EOE setup is complete.